Okay, day four. Day four of the 12 days of Bookmas. This was my least favorite so far of the stories I've read. I found it kind of boring and long. It was still okay, but I just found it to be a little more just kind of boring and drug out story that I felt like there wasn't much to the story and it was just kind of drug out way too long like they could have shortened it up more. The story was called Between the Lines by Mackenzie Dollins and it was about a, a girl named Ivy who was like 18 years old I believe. Maybe in her early 20s. I think she was like 18 years old. And she's a professional ice skater. Figure skater. Whatever. An ice skater. And she's been in the Olympics. And she's accomplished a lot of things. And she's no longer interested in skating. Like, she has to go to skate. She has to go practice for large chunks of her day every day hours and hours of practicing skating and she's tired of it she's like done with it and she has a passion for writing and she wants to be a writer but she's afraid that she will let everybody down her coach her parents everybody has invested so much in her being this professional sk skater she has a best friend, a girl named Bronwell, weird name, Bronwell, who works at the concession stand at the skating rink. There's a boy named Adler, or a guy named Adler, who works there. He drives the Zamboni, and he does like maintenance and janitorial things, and he just kind of like works around the ice skating rink and she sees him a lot and he's about the same age as her and Bronwell there's another boy named Josh who is the star player of the hockey team so she goes in the locker room one day and she stumbles upon these some pieces of paper that have been written on there they were dropped somehow she she finds them and she starts reading them and she's like, this is very strange. And then she hears the hockey players coming in. like They're about to be there for their practice. So she stuffs the papers in her backpack and she leaves. And she's like, why did I take those? They weren't mine. But she reads through them and she loves the story and she's obsessed with it. And she, it's only a part of the story. So she wants to get more of the story and she absolutely loves this writer's writing. It's a mystery writer. She doesn't know who it was. So she leaves the letters or the, the papers back in the locker room and they disappear. And she's trying to figure out who is the mystery writer. And the next... The next day, the Josh, the star of the hockey team, he's in the locker room looking around like, oh, I lost these papers. I don't, or no, he's like, I've lost something in here and I don't know where it's at. And she's like, oh, maybe he's the writer. But then he says he just lost his AirPods and he grabs them and goes. And she's like, hmm. And then the the guy that works at the place, um, Adler, I think is his name. He keeps popping up and stuff. And she's like, maybe it's him. She starts leaving sticky notes in the locker room. And, uh, that person keeps leaving more pieces of the story. And she reads them and then leaves a sticky note. And then they leave her some more pieces of the story and she's starting to kind of fall for this person 
because she loves their writing so much. She thinks it's Josh, so she asks him, like, out, like, on a date, and starts talking to him and stuff, but she figures out it's not him, after all, and he's not really that interested in her, she's not interested in him, but he asks her if her friend, Bronwell, is single or not, and she's like, yeah, she is, definitely, and she's had a crush on him for a while, so her best friend and Josh end up together as a couple. And then eventually she figures out that it is Adler and they became, they become a couple at the end and they decide he, he's going to school for like computers or something, but he actually has a passion for writing. So they both kind of decide to, pursue their writing at the end of the book so it was a long drug out story just to kind of tell you that you know she found some papers in the locker room back and forth between her and the guy um, exchanging stories and sticky notes and stuff like that until finally it's time to meet in person at the end of the story it says that they're going to get married in the future and then there's the part where it talks about get the gift okay so it says ivy was holding one of the most beautiful books she had ever seen the binding was purple with streaks of gold as she was looking at it ivy's breath caught as she traced her finger over the names of the, at the bottom of the cover Ivy Sybil and Adler Owens were printed on the bottom in gold lettering. So that's the hint. And this is the present. It definitely, whoop, definitely feels like a book. It may be a book or it might be like a notebook of some sort or a planner like a book you can write in, you know, cuz it's a story about writer, a writer. The book. One by one. By Ruth War War Ware. Ruth Ware, New York Times best-selling author of The Woman in Cabin 10 and the turn of the key. I've heard about the woman in cabin 10. It's a popular book. Oh, it's a it's a book. It's a novel. The Agatha Christie of our generation, author of five instant New York Times bestsellers. Getting snowed in at a luxurious rustic ski chalet high in the French Alps. Doesn't sound like the worst problem in the world, especially when there's a heart, a breathtaking vi vista, a full service chef and housekeeper, a cozy fire to keep you warm and others to keep you company. Unless that company happens to be eight co-workers, each with something to gain, something to lose and something to hide. When the co-founder of Snoop, a trendy London based tech startup, organizes a week-long trip for the team in the French Alps. It starts out as a corporate retreat like any other. PowerPoint presentations and strategy sessions broken up by mandatory bonding on the slopes. But as soon as one shareholder spends or upends the agenda by pushing a lucrative but contentious buyout, offer. Tensions simmer and loyalties are tested. The storm brewing inside the chalet is no match for the one brewing outside. However, the devastating avalanche leaves the group cut off from all access to the outside world. Even worse, one snooper hadn't made it back from the slopes when the avalanche hit. As each hour passes within, without any sign of rescue, panic mounts. The chalet goes 
grows colder and the group dwindles further one by one interesting oh one by one so it's about a group of people that get stuck in a ski chalet because of an avalanche Ooh, I'm so cold and freezing can't really see okay I love getting books I wonder if I'll get any books for Christmas from my mom she usually gets me books but you never know maybe I won't get any books this year all right that was day four tomorrow will be day five see you later i'm super tired i'm going to sleep bye